Welcome everyone to St. Anthony Catholic Church. I'm Father Paul Turner. I'm the pastor here and on behalf of our community, I'm greatly honored to welcome nuns on the bus. Let's do this. Let's welcome the sisters with a big welcome sisters in your native language. So on the count of three. Welcome sisters. I've worked at Taco Bell for a year and a half and I make $11.25 an hour. And even though it is above the minimum wage, I'm still not able to pay my bills like I want to and still not rely on government assistance. On top of that, I can't afford health insurance through my work, so I haven't been to see a doctor since I was pregnant. Fast food workers are strong people, fair people. We have dignity on our jobs. We're parents. We're people just like everyone else and we deserve a living wage. I've been a home care worker since I was 17. I used to like help people just in the hood. I cook, I clean, I help them take baths. I help people go to bed, um, help them go to the bathroom. I run errands for them and I do a whole lot more. Between two agencies, I work 40 hours and I make like $9 an hour with no benefits. Okay, I get, I get by by working a full-time job on the weekend. I survive by working 90 hours a week. Okay. I work seven days a week, 365 days a year. I never have a day out. One full-time job should be enough. I need a living wage. I'm the oldest out of um, um, six siblings, and we're staying with my grandma since um, our parents have been deported on May of this year. And, well, um, well, my dad first went to pay a ticket, and there he was arrested by immigration and was detained and sent back to Honduras. Mm. And so our care has fallen to my grandma, who I thank. And <laughs> I'm sorry. And she hasn't been working, and still she can take care of us, which I thank God. Yeah. And I don't know why they deport people. My dad is a good man, a hardworking man. He works every day to take care of us. He's a good father and good husband. And since then we have been struggling. My sister took it so bad since they're younger, they need both our parents. My sister here, Stephanie, who is 11 years old, tried to commit suicide. But I thank God that she's still here with us. We're still fighting. And all we want is for our parents to be with us because they're like the roots to a tree. And a tree without roots dies slowly. And all I ask is for help because this is so unfair. And we really want our family to be back together. Being an undocumented student, um, there's many obstacles I, I encounter and my family encounters. Our senior parents um, struggling on finding a, a paying job to support a family, um, yet seeing um, my father, for who is a roofer, struggle on being um, paid because people do take advantage of us. Since the ninth grade, I had the ambition to start my own business. Um, when I turned 18, that same summer, I went uh, and got my business license and started my own construction company. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Congress should protect DAPA and DACA. Uh, DAPA is an executive action to protect our parents. Uh, not only should the, the young deserve opportunities and be protected, but also the old, like our mothers and fathers. Today is the plea to the Congress to work together, to, go to, get, to work together for our people, to finally reunite all the families that need it. And I hope the Congress hear this voice. It's a plea today for all the Congress to be one. America needs to unite it. Don't we, need, we don't need to divide it. We can change this reality. That's why we're on the road. Uh, in Washington, D.C. and on the East Coast, everybody's saying, the Pope is coming, the Pope is coming. <laughs> but what we knew was, it's more than us, absolutely. But what we knew is that we needed to go on the road in advance of the Pope's coming so that we can gather all across this nation to say, we're in this together. 
we hear Pope Francis's call to all of us to end the exploitation that's going on. Pope Francis says we don't have an economic crisis and an environmental crisis. We have a single crisis of exploitation. And that's what we just heard about. Our people and our earth need to be reverenced at all times. And that's why we're on the road. We know that we need to bridge divides. And if we're going to have an economy and a environment of inclusion, we know we need to transform politics to create a politics of inclusion where everyone's voice gets heard at the table. It's hugely, hugely important that we share our stories because it's when we're together, we know we're in community and we, I have your back, you have my back. We are compadres, comadres in la lucha. We are together in the struggle because when we're together in the struggle, we don't have to lose heart. We don't have to be afraid because we're family to each other. Your family is our family. We need to be together in making a difference. So we are on the road to welcome your stories, to have our hearts broken. Now my sisters and I were crying over here. Y'all had us in tears. I just want you to know, knowing what the struggle is, but that's what's important. It's not our heads, it's not our theories. Pope Francis tells us that what we have to do is take the reality into ourselves and claim it as our own. And by knowing that pain and struggle, we will each discover what each of us can do about it. Because we, the people, can make a difference. We, the people, can bridge the divides. We, the people, can end the politics of polarization by saying, stop it. Yes. We've had enough. Yes. Now you've been name calling and get over it. Yes. The fact is, we the people need to insist on governance. We the people need to insist on a fix so people who work full time can take care of their families. No one should have to work three jobs. That's ridiculous. 90 hours a week? No one can do that. Even nuns on the bus can't do that. So it may feel like it, but we don't do that. No one should have their family torn apart. No one should worry if they're going to see their parents again. No one should think, I can't support my family. That is wrong in the richest nation on earth. We're better than that. We are better than that, and we're not going to take it anymore, right? Right. Okay. So, here's the deal. We're all becoming missionaries for the common good. Now, somebody told me last night they didn't like the idea of missionaries because it sounded a little... I don't know what, a little violent or something. I don't care how you do it. But what I say is, we've got to speak up. We cannot be silent in the face of our problems. We cannot stand back from having our hearts broken by folks like this. We, the people, have got to stand together and let people know enough is enough. We need solutions in our governance. We need solutions in our cities. We need solutions in our capitals. We need solutions in Washington, D.C. We need solutions. We don't need more language, verbiage, hot air. So, if you're willing to commit to bridging the divides and transforming our politics, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to sign our pledge cards, and our sisters have their pledge cards. They'll pass them out to you. Get to know our sisters. Make sure that, you know, Sign the pledge card, and once you've signed the pledge, oh, some of you already have them? Perfect, perfect, the advanced class here. Uh, <laughs> and once you've signed the, signed the pledge cards, then we invite you, sign our bus. So that everybody becomes, that's not just the nuns on the bus, it's all of us on the bus bridging divides, transforming politics. We need you. Kansas City. We need all of Missouri, we need all of Kansas to stand up and say enough is enough. Our folks shouldn't suffer. We the people are better than this. Let's make change happen. And let's spread the word that Pope Francis says we're in it together. We'll act with the Pope. Whether he's our, whether we're Catholics or not, everyone's welcome in Pope Francis's world. Yes. Let's make it happen. Right.
these people shouldn't suffer. Let's do it. Thank you so much. <laughs>